let's take a look at what I've done here. First flip over to the actual design canvas and the first thing you'll notice is I use the Brightwork icon in, in all of my activities here. First step is actually the manager review and that might be a, a bad name for it but what we wanted to show here is to actually show uh, that we can have different destinations based on values in the form itself. In this case the value of uh, the dollar amount. So if it's greater than $50,000 it's going to go to one destination user uh, to perform the task. If it's less than $50,000 it will actually go to another step. What this helps us show is that throughout the process you can use a lot of the data associated with uh, the tasks and the form, etc., to make decisions and perform different actions or involve different users based on those values. For instance, a project request that will end up taking nine months and cost a million dollars may take a different path that involve different people than one that would just uh, take uh, a week and cost a thousand dollars, etc. You can see from after the manager piece is done, it can go a few different ways, moving on to the project management office, etc. Uh, it can be rejected, and those are all actions that are surfaced inside of those forms that are displayed to the person involved with that task. The other thing that it can happen is I've also added this uh, make work item. We kind of discussed this briefly, uh, but what I wanted to have happen here was if this goes to the project management office for review, they can actually say this request doesn't meet the, the criteria for an actual project, so we're going to make this a simple work request, and it will go through the path of inserting those list items uh, into the work request area. Next, let's take a look at what else can happen uh, for this. What I can also do here is add additional criteria for paths that this should take, such as the person approved it and one of the values is red, or in this case, or you can also put different things in there for yellow. Uh, so I can take different paths based on the status changes that occur at that step. So K2 at that point in time will look at the data that was put in the form uh, and evaluate that to see whether or not it takes one branch versus the other. The idea here being that this is very dynamic in nature and we can do a lot of different things with the process itself. In here you can see that my approve or reject is very common, but what I can do inside of these is say I want to require everybody involved with this to approve if it's going to be approved, but if one person rejects it, it will actually end up being rejected. In the case of a lot of companies where they actually have some type of a project management board that ends up meeting and voting on projects and prioritizing them based on cost and benefit, etc., I could end up setting outcomes uh, for each one of those so that if my board requires a three of five type of approval to move on, I can say if three, as soon as the third person approves this, it's considered approved or I can wait until all five do it, uh, and I can set up different rules like that to make it very dynamic in nature. After that, it goes to create the, the project and will actually set the permissions on that site and update that status along the way to where it 
uh, writes to that list item and makes sure that at every step, whatever happens at that step, the latest status is actually put into that list item. As I said before, we also have the, the work request path that it takes, and it will go through and assign an, a, a work item to the person involved uh, with that work request, and they can perform the work and then update that task to say they've completed the work necessary. So now let's actually see this in action and show you some of the other pieces. Uh, it's a very basic form where we just enter in some uh, some information into some text fields. You'll, re you'll see that I'm entering in some actual username information here. That allows us to set up different pieces, decision on who gets assigned what, and what permissions get assigned at, at the creation screen. Uh, that's just how it's set up in here. We can use those usernames all over the place uh, to assign work or uh, set, set permissions for other things, etc. But you can see this is just a basic info path. Uh, as we decided before, uh, the goal being no code, uh, and you could use Blackpoint or not. So I didn't want to use ASP.NET, etc. But you could also do uh, some of your SharePoint forms, etc. On the ratings indicator, I'm setting them all to green, but uh, as I said before, each step of the process can go back and change those uh, in the form or, or, or other, other places. So the user has filled out the basic form. Now, as you saw in there, I put in uh, an username specific, and that's who I want this uh, assigned to. So we have to go look at their work list, and that can be seen inside of SharePoint, or it can be seen inside of... Uh, other places. We're going to use the workspace, which is the default out of the box K2 piece. Uh, so let's flip to that. Open Mike's browser. And we see it right there. Manager review. I can perform different actions such as redirecting it, delegating it, or view flow, which is a, a very important piece for K2 that allows you to graphically see things. So we're going to set up some real-time monitoring and go back and action this. I can action it from, from here and just approve or reject it. Or I can click on open and open it in the info path form itself, which is what I'll do here. I can see all the fields that I filled out before and can change those if need be. Or I can just submit this back. Now if I flip back over to my view flow, you see it update and is now at the PMO review activity. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. And I know that this is actually uh, still assigned to me since that's the name I put in there. And once again we can go through that drop down list and action things or make it a work request etc. So we'll go ahead and approve it from here without having to open the form and then we'll flip back to our view flow and watch that update. So we saw it register the project, so create that list item, and now it's at the next step of creating the new site. And there we go, it pushes right through and is now assigned to the project manager to update their status, etc. So we'll close this. Go back to the project manager step. 
and we'll go ahead and action this as task completed and that will end the actual process itself. We can go back to our SharePoint site here. Take a look at all the projects that are created. And this is uh, all your functionality. We're just trying to link into it to create different list items, add announcements or links. You can automate that with any part of the process. Uh, in what I have done, I've only done the, the first entry level. If we wanted to kick off another process, uh, once the request was completed that manages all the other steps in the process, you could do that and, and show that. Uh, you could also uh, put out some templates that, that help the customer create their own based on how they particularly manage their processes. Just trying to find where it created that. So let's go back to all site content. There we go. And you can see that it created uh, that project two minutes ago. And as I click on it, that'll open up that project site that we created. Uh, and you can make part of the form uh, what template you want to use, uh, but as long as you make sure that's all updated.